here is less than 3.8 related rates. So we were kind of we know the the tools for this lesson. We know implicit differentiation, hopefully, and so now we're going to jump right in and um, look at how it can be used in real life problems. So the first thing you need are these five steps. I call it dreads. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a picture that depicts your situation. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to label and find all your rates and variables. The third thing you're going to do is you're going to find an equation that uses those variables. The fourth thing you're going to do is differentiate, most of the time using implicit differentiation. And then finally you'll get to solve the problem. So really you want to do five steps for all of these. So let's look at our first example. So our first example says that um, air is being pumped into a spherical balloon so that its volume increases at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. How fa fast is the radius of the balloon increasing? when the diameter is 50 centimeters. So the first thing you want to do is draw a sphere. I'm going to try to make it somewhat three-dimensional. My iPad's not letting me, though. So you're going to make, draw a sphere, and you're going to label the only variable that really works or is useful for a sphere is the radius. Okay. okay. Now let's think about what we know. The uh, information they gave us here was how the uh, volume is increasing. So that is a change in volume per unit of time. So I'm going to make that a T instead of a S for seconds. Let's make that a T. And so I know that dV dt is 100 centimeters cubed per second. Okay. Next, it says how fast is the radius changing? So that is our dr dt, and that's what we're trying to find. And let's think about our equations that go with it. So we have a picture. We thought about the rates that they told us and the rates that they uh, need us to find. The next would be our equation. I know that the volume of a, uh, of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, let's think about what else they told us. They said that the diameter is 50 centimeters. So half of that. So we're going to use that the radius is 25 centimeters. So now we have all our variables, our rates, and our equations. So we've kind of done pro steps one through three. So now we need to use differentiation. Now, you'll notice that our variable is time. These equations don't have time in them. So for us to get a change per something in a unit of time, we're going to differentiate with respect to a variable t that isn't even in the equation. So that's where implicit differentiation comes to play. So we're going to differentiate this, but every time we're going to have to tack on a v prime or an r prime, which we're going to call dv dt and dr dt. So this will be dv dt times 1, which is just dv dt, and then 4 thirds pi 3 
r squared dr dt. Now, we want to solve for dr dt. That's what we were looking for. That's what we discovered we were looking for. So now we should have, if we did it right, we should have numbers to put in for all other things in our equation. Well, we know what that is. That's 100. We know what that is. It is 25. And then our only thing missing is dr dt. So we can now solve it. So we differentiate it. We're going to plug it in and solve it. Well, let's do a little bit of cleaning up here. This is 100 equals. Now our uh, threes can cancel. 4 times 125 is 100. So um, that would be 2500 pi dr dt. Now, to get rid of the 25 100 pi, we need to divide both sides by 2,500 pi. And so dr dt is 100 over 2,500 pi. Now that would be centimeters per second. And then it finally reduces down to 1 over 25 pi centimeters per second. And we've solved it. For that is how fast the radius is increasing at that exact moment when our diameter hits 50 centimeters. So it's 1 over 25 pi centimeters per second. <coughs> Here's example 2. It says a ladder that is 10 feet long is resting against a vertical wall. The bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second. How fast is the top of the ladder, ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? So the first thing you have to do is draw a picture. Here's our picture. Okay. So let's think about what we have. So what do we know? Well, we know that dx dt, because we've put an x in the x direction, is 1 foot per second. Now, what else do we want to know? We want to know the change in y, because the y is the thing sliding down the wall. So we're looking for dy dt. We're looking for dy dt. If we call the hypotenuse z, z is a constant. It isn't changing. Okay. So we have a drawing. We have our variables and our rates. So these two things are done. The next thing we need is an equation relating x and y. Well, the equation that relates them is the Pythagorean theorem. I know that x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. The next, so our e is done. So the next thing we have to find is our differentiation step. So we have to differentiate it. We're differentiating with respect to time. So each thing we differentiate gets a, if it's an x, it gets a dx dt. If it's a y, it gets a dy dt. Okay? So we're going to have 2x, but we have to tack on like an x prime. So it's times dx dt. plus 2y dy dt equals the derivative of a constant, which is 0. Let me make that look a little nicer.
Now let's think about what we know. It says the ladder is six feet from the wall, so x equals six. So we can put a six right here. They gave us dx dt, that's right here. dy dt is what we're solving for. We still need one other variable. We need y. But let's think about what we know. This is a triangle where this is 6 and this is 10. Well, we can figure it out. We can f find it out by the Pythagorean theorem. Here's our y. So it's actually going to be um, 8. So now we know every single variable except for what we want, dy dt. So let's plug them in. So we've got, we differentiated last step. We're now going to solve it. So it's going to be 2 times 1, or 2 times uh, 6. Yeah, okay, I was about to say. <laughs> 2 times 6 times 1 plus 2 times 8 dy dt equals 0. Well, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 8 is 16. Move the 12 to the other side. It's going to become a negative. And then divide by 16. Reduce the fraction. They're both divisible by 4. So that would be negative 3 fourths. Let's put our um, units on. That would be feet per second. Now the reason it is negative is because that y, as the ladder slides down the wall, y is becoming smaller. So that negative uh, indicates that it is that length from the top down to the bottom is decreasing. So that is your answer for example two. Yeah. Example three. A water tank has the shape of an inverted cone. They love these inverted cone problems for related rates. With the base two meters and the height four meters. If water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of two cubic meters per minute, find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is three meters deep. So here's our picture, okay? The height is labeled as 4, the radius is labeled 2, and then at any particular height, the, the radius would be r and the height would be h. So there's a picture. Remember, the first thing you want is to draw what's happening. So that's what we've done. The next thing we want to do is we want to label the rates they gave us. So they said that we are pumping in a volume. So we have a dv dt is 2 cubic meters per minute. It says when the height is 3 meters. And it says to find the rate at which the water level is rising. So that is a dH dt is what we are looking for. So we need an equation that relates volume and height. So let's think about the equation for the volume of a cone. Okay. So, oh, and they also told us that the uh, radius was 2 and the height was 4, which we've labeled. Okay. So, the volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h. So we have rates. We almost have an equation. We want an equation that only contains volume and height. But we've got this r in there. So we have to take care of the r somehow. And this is how we take care of the r. This is a proportion. Inside a cone, if you look, that is two similar triangles. 
So I know that r over h has to equal 2 over 4. The height is always going to be double the radius. So look if you solve this. r is always 1 half h. So let's take this r, and I want h's only. So I'm going to take the r out, and I'm going to replace it with 1 half h. So I get 1 third pi. I'm going to write that as pi over 3. 1 half h squared times h, which is pi. Now the 3 times by 2 squared is 4. That will be a 12 h cubed. So there's our equation. We found it. We found an equation that relates volume and height. Last, or almost last step, now we get to differentiate. Let me move these over a little bit. That's not exactly what I meant to do. There we go. Okay. So if we differentiate, we get dv dt equals pi over 12 times 3h squared dh dt. So now we should have everything accounted for. We have dv dt is 2. We have h is 3. Now the only missing variable will be dh dt. So let's plug in what we know. So that was 2. This is 3 pi over 12 becomes pi over 4 times 3 squared dh dt. 3 squared is 9. So that's 2 equals 9 pi over 4 dh dt. To solve for dh dt, we need to flip that 9 pi over 12 and put it to the other side. Or 9 pi over 4, I'm sorry, and flip it to the other side. So that would be 2 times 4 over 9 pi. Equals dh dt. So dh dt equals 8 over 9 pi. Now we should put units on there. The height is in meters. The time is in um, seconds. No, I'm sorry, minutes. So this would be uh, meters per minute. <coughs> and that's example three. So let's just go down the, um, the strategy that you want to use when you're doing these problems. And, and it, it follows our dreads. But, you know, you can just, just watch this and, and this will kind of help hopefully organize your thoughts. The first thing you got to do is read the problem. Then you want to draw a diagram, if possible, of the situation. And that's really important. You know, it doesn't matter the quality of your drawing. It, what matters is, is that you have everything on there that you need. And then you have to introduce the notation that goes with the problems. So you have to assign variables uh, and the rates and everything to your uh, drawing. After you have that, you want to express the given information required in terms of derivatives. So now you're getting ready to differentiate. But you've got to get your equation that contains the variables that you want. Then you um, have to use the chain rule to differentiate. That's our implicit differentiation. Remember, you're, you're differentiating with respect to time. And time is not in the equation. That's why you have to do this, this kind of weird technique with your implicit differentiation. And then you're ready to substitute the information back into your differentiated uh, problem. And then that will allow you to solve it.
So that's kind of what you do every time. You need a drawing, got to get those equations and those rates ready. Once you get those equations and rates ready, then you want to differentiate with respect to time. Then you want to actually substitute back in and solve. So if you follow that strategy every time, you'll be good to go. So in example four, we've got a car traveling west at 50 miles per hour. We've got a car traveling north at 60 miles per hour. They're both headed for an intersection of two roads. At what rate are the cars approaching each other when car A is 3 tenths of a mile and car B is 4 tenths of a mile from the intersection? So the first thing you have to do is draw a picture. So draw your intersection. Draw... Um, car A uh, east of the um, intersection traveling west, car B should be south of the intersection traveling north, and um, then let's label what they told us. So um, you'll notice this time we have X, Y, and Z because all three things are changing all the time. Now it says that car A is traveling 50 miles per hour toward the intersection. So car A would be um, traveling, uh, that would be dx dt, and that distance is getting smaller, so it would be a negative 50 miles per hour. Now, car B is traveling toward the intersection point C, and so they are going to be dy dt, and it's getting smaller, and so that is negative 60 miles per hour. And the question is, is at what rate are the cars approaching each other? This is the distance between the cars, so we're looking for dz dt. We're looking for dz dt. I can't make a z today. Now let's think about what X and Y happen to be. They told us that we want the distance away for X to be 0.3, and we want the distance of Y to be away from the intersection 0.4. So at that particular exact instant, C would be 0.5. And you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that. Now, the, the equation that relates all three is that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So we have our drawing, we have our rates and variables, we have our equation. So now it is a matter of differentiating. So let's differentiate. So we get 2x dx dt plus 2y, y prime or dy dt equals 2z dz dt. So now we should have all the pieces and parts to plug in except for the dz dt that we are looking for. So it would be 2 times 0.3 times negative 50 plus 2 times 0.4 times negative 60 equals 2 times 0.5 dz dt. Well, 2 times 0.3 times negative 50 is negative 30. 2 times 0.4 times negative 60 is negative 48. Uh, 2 times 0.5 is 1, so that's just going to be dz dt. And so we get negative 78 miles per hour is dz dt. And that is our answer to example four. We have solved it.
and here are the problems we're going to do for 